Welcome to the channel. My name's Mike, and in this shed behind me, I'm in the beginning steps of building a 28-foot wooden power boat based upon Doug Hyland's bowler design. I've already gotten a little bit of a start before I decided to film this adventure, but I'm going to take a few minutes to bring everybody up to speed with where I am, and then we'll turn the rest of our attention for this episode to getting the station molds cut out. Thanks for joining. Please bear with me for just a minute or two more talking and then I promise we'll get out to the boat shed and start cutting some pieces of wood. Before we do that though, I do think it's important uh, to give you a little brief description about the plans from Highland and Brown and more importantly, uh, introduce you to a SketchUp model that I use to help solve spatial problems. So the plans from Highland and Brown are six pages of CAD and three pages of text that so far have done a flawless job of answering any questions I may have about the design and I don't expect they're going to let me down any time in the future. I do want to draw an important distinction though in between ownership, my ownership of this set of plans and the fact that I do not own the intellectual property contained within them. So because of that, for this video series I will not be sharing uh, on screen any pictures or video of the plans themselves. Uh, there are uh, quite a bit of publicly available, uh, both drawings and photographs of, the, of this design, and I encourage you to take a look if you're curious about it. But in lieu of that, I'm going to use this SketchUp model uh, as my primary way of communicating visual information outside of just watching me work. So let's take a minute. I'm going to describe to you the model, where I'm at in it, and how I'm using it for the rest of today's episode. So here we are in SketchUp, and what we're looking at is called a station. Uh, stations are essentially cross-sectional slices of the hull that are taken at specific points along its length. And in the case of the bowler design, there are 14 stations that are spaced at just under two feet apart. Uh, the drawings include half stations, like what's shown here. And what those are are measurements from a center line right here and a water line right here that if you take those measurements and create a series of points, you'll define the perimeter, uh, the perimeter of the station. So by doubling that, you have the full cross section of the hull. And if we back out here and turn the rest of it on, uh, you have all the stations together. So for most smaller boats like the bowler, uh, the first step in their construction is to turn these stations into a series of molds uh, that the hull will then be built around. Um, for this project, I'm going to be using a 5 8 zip wall sheathing to build the molds, which is uh, a really dense OSB panel and is uh, similar to the material that's provided in the, in the bowler kit available from Highland & Brown. Personally, I find the prospect of accurately cutting and fairing 28 pieces of OSB to be horrifying. Uh, so my plan instead is to mark out and cut each station on quarter inch plywood and then use those as templates to cut the molds out themselves. This should wind up saving me a ton of time uh, by only having to cut and fare each station once on the much easier template material and hopefully uh, it'll also guarantee that the sides are going to be symmetrical. So I've already cut out and fared all but the last two templates uh, so now we'll head out to the boat shed and get those finished up. So here, uh, to pull it off the paper and onto some template plywood, is one of the last two station mold or uh, station templates I have yet to cut. This one's for station nine. Uh, although you see I have gotten a start, uh, this uh, notch right here is for a longitudinal stringer that runs uh, for the, through the last few stations at the aft end and ties into the transom. You'll see this main line is the water line, just like in the drawing. And from that, hopefully you can see it, there's a few spots. Uh, up here that represent the six inch increments that the designer used uh, to pull X and Y coordinates off the center line, which I'm using the uh, just the edge of the plywood for that. Um, I guess the last thing to point out is I did go ahead and make a, a template that had the deck camber on it that I pulled off of the plans. 
and I'm leaving that camber on the station molds uh, in the hope that once the boat's rolled over and with the station molds still inside of it, I'll be able to use these to help form that plywood that's going to that's gonna comprise the side decks. I think that's enough talking for now. Let's fire up the track saw and get these two templates cut out. Now over here on the side, this is the top side and it actually arcs away a little bit from both the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of split the difference here and uh, just graze that curve here in the middle to cut down on how much hand planing I'll have to do to get it fared out. So here's a shot that's showing that edge right there uh, for the top sides. You can see my pencil line. Hopefully this doesn't make anybody seasick. And moving down here towards the uh, chine, you can see it shows up again. So this is just going to be a few minutes of the hand plane. Um, I'm going to give myself two minutes to get it right and uh, it should true right up. A little easier on these convex surfaces back here at station nine the uh, top sides has some tumble home to them so it makes it nice playing on the outside of a beach ball as opposed to the inside I think that looks good from here and good from here well, I guess the last thing that I want to point out here is uh, up here at the shear, I made these little blocks that represent the dimensional stock I'll be cutting for the shear. And uh, just laid it in here, parallel with the top side, and meeting in the corner up here at the deck cam, bottom side of the deck camber, and traced it out. The goal is to cut these out in advance on my templates. Uh, did the same thing down here with the chine, but just a slightly bigger piece. And. Uh, when I get to the point where I'm routing out the uh, actual plywood for the station molds, I'm hoping that I can cut these out and it'll be a quick and expedient process. Uh, or it's a slingshot to a bunch of shims and cussing. So we'll find out.
With these last two templates finished up, we're now caught up to real time. One of the things I've been looking forward to sharing with these videos is the amount of time it's taking me to do these different tasks. These last two templates only took me about an hour or so to cut and fare and have ready for the routing, but there are 14 station molds in this boat and overall I probably spent about eight hours or so with the cutting and fairing and getting them ready to go. By far what took the most time though was actually the layout and marking of the templates, which was probably a couple hours apiece between measuring and springing battens and checking for fare and double checking. And all in all, I'd probably say I have somewhere around 40 hours uh, to get to this point as far as actual marking and cutting of, of pieces of wood. Uh, added to that would be three or four hours of time spent in SketchUp building the model, but also a, a lot of time spent just looking at the plans and thinking my way through them and trying to make sure that my brain is at least a step or maybe two ahead of what my hands are doing. This puts me at a good stopping point for now though. So tomorrow the plan is to come out of here to the shed and get the mold halves rough cut with a circular saw and ready for trim routing to final shape. Today's job in the boathouse is looking like it's going to be nothing but a bunch of noise and sawdust. So instead of listening to me talk, I think I'm going to play a little music that I hope you guys enjoy. And while I might not be as excited about this step as Lucas appears to be, I am looking forward to getting these pieces cut out and ready to assemble. I gotta put a real door on that. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. That was every bit as nasty and dusty as you'd expect it to be. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, 